This is the fifth tutorial of my tutorial series and it's about lightning and shadows, how it behaves and uh, how you can make your photo manipulation art more realistic by using techniques that I will teach you guys that I have learned as a photographer. So I hope you brought your coffee with you or whatever energy you need because this video will be full of information. Well, it will be quite the journey to go through. So I also recommend that you use the timestamps in the description down below to jump to wh wherever you need to be in this video. But of course, you are welcome to follow along for this full tutorial of basically two weeks of studies crumbled into less than a half an hour. Anyway, I'm Double Art Angel. I hope you enjoy these kind of videos. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's just jump right to the tutorial. Okay guys, so let's start with the light tutorial and we start from the basics, right? The techniques that you use in photography when lighting subjects or getting some kind of mood into the picture also applies to photo manipulations to get them to look more realistic. So let's start from the beginning. Let's start with the first art artboard here. We have this mannequin from a top down view. So here's a side view and this one is in a neutral state of light and that means it's a white background everywhere basically so there's no definition in what the light source is because the whole area is a light source right these terms that i'm gonna go through are there's one light that you always use when you take photos especially when you do portrait photos or there's a subject that you want to bring forth in in your picture and that is the main light or key light we have this light source that is in front of the subject and the main thing for this light is to show us where the subject is in the picture and bring forth for example the face so that you can see specific details. Then we have backlight or fill light. These are lights often on the side behind the subject and it brings a highlighted edge on the subject and gives it more of a 3D feel if you will it changes the shadows so that you see that the form is there let's start with indoor lighting when you have a direct light with no diffuser and no other light sources the shadows will be strong on one side on the opposite side of the light source and the highlights will also be strong on the side where the light is coming from this is inside how this works if you add a diffuser to the light source and the diffuser means that the light is not straight gonna uh, light up the subject it's uh, like diffused with something like a paper or cloth or something whatever these light sources for example these so-called light boxes are diffused the shadow is gonna be less strong and also the highlight is gonna be more op opaque and spread more around the difference between highlight and shadow is uh, more more subtle and uh, not as strong. Then as a photographer you also have a so-called reflector and reflectors are basically a surface that reflects the light that you already have. So for example now we have a key light or a front light and that means that the light source is in front of the subject but we also have a reflector that is reflecting the light from let's say the other side of the subject and this means that the exposure will go up on that side but the shadows will still stay the same as before uh, behind the subject or wherever the light source can't touch. Often reflectors does take away from the shadows from the side that it's on. Uh, what you can do with reflectors is making highlighted glances or glares 
to the picture. When you diffuse the key light, uh, the subject's shadow will become less visible. And this is indoor lighting situations. Let's go to indoor light variations. All of your light is diffused, both your key light and your fill light. You will get an even shadow, but it's gonna be very subtle. The subject's shadow will almost disappear. Okay, so now when main light sources, ma main light or key light, backlight or fill light, hair light or top light, it, it gives this new exposure on your shoulders, your head, your ears, little around your uh, waist and a small amount of so-called rim light or edge light. I will go through these later in this tutorial. The reason why we use these kind of light sources is to bring forth the subject in the picture, focusing the subject in a background. So if, for example, if you have a busy background, one way is of course field of view, keep the subject in focus using head or top light and giving that little exposure edge on shoulders and the higher part of the body brings also forth the subject. Okay, next up, outdoor lighting variation. When we're outside, we have the sun, right? So, and spe no special occasions, just normal situations. The first thing to bear in mind is our shadow will be stronger because the light source is stronger and it will also be more sharp because the light source is further away. It's large but it's further away. You can test this with a lamp also by holding the hand further away from the light source near, near the surface. You will have a smaller shadow that is uh, more sharp and crisp and if you move towards the light source the shadow gets bigger but it also becomes becomes more blurry and that's one thing to bear in mind always when we are outside. As for the lighting, overcast outdoor lighting, so uh, basically headlight would have a little tint of blue in it because the sky is reflecting from our from the ocean right and that's blue and our planet is blue so outdoor we can always reference the like the main highlight color on the sky color when it's cloudy weather the clouds work as as diffusers to the sun so the highlight will be non-direct more opaque and a slight tint of blue. Okay, so uh, in direct sunlight, shadow is sharp and underneath the subject because the light source is above the subject. Very easy. This is without any reflectors. So what would be a reflector in nature? Well, water, for example, is whatever, some, some pool or a reflective surface. This makes the light more diffuse and that simply makes the shadows less visible. Subject shadow that is on the ground will be as sharp as before. The shadows that are on the subject will be less visible. In a lighting situation when the key light is uh, the sun and it's sunrise, we have a hue that is close to yellow, could be a little orange, uh, even green sometimes. Basically you use the color of the horizon in the background to give a little hue to the exposure of the subject. The shadow would be blurry, the main light source is not that strong or it's strong but we can't see it because it's behind the horizon right it has hasn't risen yet and the shadows would be like on top of the subject still and uh, you would have a little backlight and or well um, if you're in front of it, if you use it as the key light, you would, it would light light up the subject uh, from in the middle about, and but there would be a slight shadow all around the silhouette of the subject. Okay, so the opposite to sunrise is sunset, right? And in this case, it's going away and it will illuminate less. The light source would be somewhat red and the shadow is almost purple kind of color variation and the shadow is actually 
about the same as in Sunrise. The subject shadow would be also a purple tint and basically the opposite to orange or red. And uh, so the last variation that I have is a direct sun on noon and uh, that's basically the same as direct sunlight with no reflectors but you add a little of the hint of you red purple orange is very very subtle version of it but still and that's the outdoor lighting variations so the last thing i'm gonna go through in this basic lighting tutorial before we start the actual artwork is outdoor situations above and picking picking colors as a gradient and also a little bit of the color from the actual ground exposed area to give it a subtle hint also of that color so let's start with the shadow and the shadow will be since we have the light source on the right side on the left side okay but then we have the exposure and in this one we first first we add start to add the exposure as in sunrise so on the right side but now we also have a situation where all the snow on the ground and it's reflecting the sunlight so we need to add light underneath and what you get now is a uh, a natural way of so-called loop lighting and that means that you get this shadow underneath your nose that is rounded around one way and then you have a specific shadow also on one side of the subject and it, this brings forth the subject better now of course this is over exaggerated because I just wanted to show this basically that's what we get when we have a outdoor winter morning situation another one that it may become is a so-called Rembrandt and that's a triangle underneath the eye and the other side is almost all lit up this gives a dramatic uh, natural light to it anyway now the next situation uh, that I've chosen is an early morning Sun you have a yellow orange kind of tint to it and exposure highlight from the sun quite low still so you get the exposure pretty much straightforward on the subject and like i said before the top of the model is also in shadow on the side that is not the light source now i'm not taking in consideration anything uh, around us like any environments like this light here because i'm trying to simplify this basically what this light would do is make a rim light and we are coming to the rim light when i make the actual artwork that we are gonna do today here is just the basics of how shadows and light behaves in different situations outside and inside before the next situation that i have here is overcast day so middle of day when the sun is in zenith aka up in the sky but we have a haze in the background that makes it diffused and this makes it a top light that is diffused as a key light i gave it this subtle blue tint of light to it and where a very diffuse shadow so very low opacity also blurry and underneath the subject the highlight will be from the top and very strong but also diffuse this can be called a so-called so zenithal highlight and it means that all the light area is in a 45 65 degree angle or like from above the shadow is well on the opposite side so but that also means that there's high exposure on from every angle edge light would not be as visible on this kind of situation basically this huge diffuse key light that we have above the subject now is dominating also the subject picture the shadow would basically also now be here almost in the center of of the of the subject that depends on where 
higher on planet Earth we are. The closer to the equator we are, the, the smaller the shadow. Anyway, let's go to the... That is the second to last situation that I'm gonna show you guys. Is when you're outside in moonlight beside the ocean. So basically you have a, not as strong key light, but you have a reflector. A very huge reflector. So what we begin with, giving the subject the, the tint of the moonlight and that's a pretty pure white almost cold blue depends on the moon of course there's blood moons and so on I'm trying to um, match the color of the moon is up to you how you do but I decided to go with this tint and after that we do we give the subject the darkness of the night basically what I did was making a gradient by picking color from the background of the picture sky bringing down a little the opacity now in this situation I use color burn as the layer style to match with the scene but basically when you have moonlight you also have pretty vague shadow now it's further away so it's sharp but it's vague so it's small but sharp anyway the shadow would have a somewhat blue tint in it so the light comes from top it's a top light since it's the moon and the shadow would be underneath and on the opposite side except for now we have the ocean on the opposite side working as a reflector and that means that it would give a diffused light all over the side of the subject the strongest shadows would probably be in crevices and such on the bottom side of the subject now what I haven't done on any of these pictures yet is subject uh, shadow being that there's always a darker shadow just where the sh subject is touching the ground the exposure would be from the top and from the left sort of senator highlight also this one except for the shadow has a tint of blue in it because it's in the night the shadows will be apparent right underneath the light source so the moon okay so the last situation that i will bring forth in this light tutorial is late sunset so we have this background with the sunset and the sun is here on the right side again and it's in uh, orange state almost underneath the horizon so i'm giving this subject a, a hue that is darker because the light needs to be also dark and also a gradient layer that gives it the feel that it is in sunlight orange basically except for uh, on the top it still has a little of this blue tint in the sky so let's keep it that way and the shadow will be pretty diffused and on the opposite side than the light source in this example it's gonna be here on the left side and it will be more subtle than in a sunrise uh, sunrise the light source is about to begin and it becomes brighter and brighter so then the shadows also sharper as for in sunset the shadows are more diffused they are more blurred more grayish if you will because the light source is dimming away so in this case it's gonna be on the right side I'll give a little little highlight also on from above because it seems like the Sun is still a little higher up I use linear burn on my gradient this time to bring forth the color so these are uh, variations that are quite common in uh, photo manipulations uh, I will go through more techniques in how to make rim light or highlights uh, also in pictures but we will do that in the actual artwork that I will make in voiceover let's go to the time lapse we'll show them too so stay tuned
Hey guys, so yesterday I made this art piece that I have been talking about in the intro and in the beginning of our tutorial, light tutorial, and uh, I decided that I want to make something that is referencing from Dishonored and um, maybe Bioshock a little and also uh, Immortal Engine, the movie. I really love that movie. But I wanted it to be uh, pirate themed and also in the air, so sky pirates. Anyway, we have this steampunk beginning of a background here. So basically this sunlight is gonna be the key light or main light and it will actually be behind the subject this time but it's still the main light source in this picture uh, and, but all these clouds over here are diffused reflectors let's begin by big uh, building the picture so this composition is made so so that it uh, will bring forth uh, light situations so you guys can see when I make them so we begin by hiding the objects and uh, I decided that I will have multiple other light sources for example these cannons will be firing almost every cannon will be firing and from that there will be small light sources also that will bring fill light to the picture and I will pick a hue and saturation layer that will uh, check the colorize button and I will try to match the color from the sun. Okay, so let's start highlighting and what I will do now is use this light source to bring uh, light on the edges of these buildings and that will be so-called uh, edge light or rim light. Okay, so it lights up the left side pretty bright and the right side also a little. It means that uh, this front side that is facing us will be darker. Opposite side of light is shadow, right? So we need to uh, match this picture. Well, basically the details in this picture. Well, these pipes, they are already quite dark, so I think they go as is, but this refinery part, I need to use curves to bring down the lightness in it and exposure. So we match, we match the picture with the help of a curve adjustment layer. You can highlight the area that needs to be highlighted and that the light, uh, that this is a part of the picture as well. And all the flat surface, this is some kind of metal, right? So it will be reflective. And that means that all the flat surfaces will be uh, in a higher exposure uh, and the shadows will be quite strong. Like the edges will be quite strong. It, it won't be a subtle, subtle difference between light and shadow. Okay, um, so here is the result of me setting some hours on the actual artwork and well it became pretty ambitious when we have this steampunk uh, battle going on. Uh, we have several more light sources, right? And uh, so the main light is the sun and brings all the rim light or edge light highlighting to the picture all over the place. Now I added some blur to this picture because now we come to the main part of this tutorial being uh, now when we have everything else in place we could start from the left and go to the right so we start with the commander. This explosion or burning debris behind here uh, a subtle highlight from the fire, the huge fire uh, at the pirate ship. Uh, rim light. And rim lights you make by adding a hue and saturation layer, uh, clicking in the colorize button and bring the saturation up. Let's bring the lightness up also like that and then make it orange hide that one and make this one matching this light source over here and the previous one was matching the sun and now i'm gonna mask off this one like that and bring this one back 
And in this part, when you make uh, a rim light or a edge light, you have to decide what is the dominant dominant uh, light source. Is it this fire that is closer but smaller, or is it the sun that is behind? So that's why I'm gonna use the sun as reference. That's the light source that I'm going with. So let's hide this layer and take a soft brush and bring back on the edges. So, the last thing before going to the time lapse is the subject sad shadow. Uh, I will use a brightness layer to this one as well, but it will be significantly stronger or darker. Hide the mask, bring shadows underneath the stuff that she has on her. 